I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my YouTube channel and the website globalmathinstitute.com. In this series of calculus, we are going to further explore the inverse function and its derivative. Here is a formula which we will try to understand and prove in this particular video. Have a good look at it. This is one of the most important formula which you'll come across while dealing with derivative of inverse functions. Now, before getting into the details of the formula itself, let's try to understand what is it saying. Saying that prove that derivative of inverse function is equal to 1 over derivative of inverse of the function. It really means that if I take a function, for example, let me draw a function here. Let's say one side of a parabola. Let's say something like this. So that is the function for us. Inverse of this function will be a square root function, which you could draw by reflecting it on the line y equals to x, correct? So if you reflect it on this line, you get a function which will be inverse of this function. So let me call this function as g of x, which is the same as f inverse of x. What we are saying here is that the derivative on this function at any particular point, let us say we consider a point a, b. Let me just draw the derivative here in this fashion. Let's say this is the point which is a, b, right? In that case, the image of the point will be b, a, correct? On the inverse function. We want to find the relationship between the derivative which represents the slope of the tangent line at that point, correct, with the slope of the tangent line on the corresponding point of the inverse function. So that may be called as g prime of b. You get the idea. The point a, b will now be b a on the inverse of the function. So that is f inverse x, which is basically g of b, right? So we want to find how are f prime a and g prime b related. And we're saying that the relation is reciprocal, which is given here. Does make sense to you? Perfect. That is what the real question is. So let me see this problem in a different way. We are trying to show, rather we know, and we'll try to prove it now, that inverse function has reciprocal slope at corresponding points correct? You see it is a reciprocal slope. So that is the slope on the function and this is reciprocal of this slope on the inverse function. So that is what it is. So basically we are trying to prove that inverse function has reciprocal slope at corresponding points. So every a b will be b a on the inverse function and that will follow. So to prove it, we are going to consider a function f of x equals to x squared plus 1. To make it 1 to 1, we will only take x values greater than or equal to 0. So as I had sketched earlier, let me redo it. So, so the graph of the function will be x squared plus 1 as shown here 
find the inverse of this function, which is g of x. So inverse you could find graphically also, reflecting on y equals to x. And that gives you the graph, which is kind of like this. That is g of x, right? Which is f inverse of x. And we can find it algebraically also. So we'll do it algebraically. We'll find the inverse of this function. And then part b, what we are going to do is, if a point a, b is on f of x, then the corresponding point on g of x will be b, a, correct? So as I said, if I have a point here, which is a, b, then its image will be b, a on the inverse function. We will compare the value of derivative at a with derivative of inverse at b. That is what we will compare. So derivative really means the tangent line, correct? So that is what we are going to compare. So derivative at a will be f prime x and you may say a and the derivative at g will be g prime b. These are the two values which we are going to compare and then we will prove what we wanted to prove, the formula, correct? First thing first, let us find inverse of the function. So we are given the value as y equals to x square plus 1 where x is greater than or equal to 0. Well, you know that y value is also greater than or equal to 1 in this case, right? It is positive. And it is always increasing, right? Which ensures that the inverse will be a function. So now to find the inverse, we'll swap x and y. So we can write this as x equals to y square plus 1. This step is to find so we'll do swap to find inverse. And now we'll isolate y. So we can say that y square is equals to x minus 1 and y square root of x minus 1. And as you can see here, the x value should be greater than or equal to 1. So the domain and range swap, correct? So coming back to our figure, it will look kind of like this. As we had drawn earlier, reflection on y equals to x will also give us the graph of the inverse function, which will be like this. Is that clear to you? Right. So that becomes the inverse function. Perfect. So you have the inverse function. Now, let us evaluate the der derivatives, right? So we know that f dash x is equal to 2x, the derivative of this function, when f of x is x squared plus 1. We also found that g of x, which is the inverse of this function, is square root of x minus 1, right? where y value has to be greater than or equal to 1. So that becomes, so g of x, so what is the derivative of this function? It is 1 over 2 square root x minus 1, correct? So using the power rule, we get our derivatives. So we have derivatives, that is the slope of the tangent line, for both the functions. Now we are going to consider different points A's and B's, right? So we are considering the value of A to be 1, 2, and 3. Okay. So if A is 1, that is f of 1 is what? Right? Let's evaluate this. So we'll find the points first, A and B points on the function f of x. So if a is 1, then b will be 1 square plus 1, correct, which is 2. 
And if a is 2, it will be 2 square plus 1, which is 5. And if a is 3, then 3 square is 9, 9 plus 1 is 10. So these are the values of a and b. So that gives us derivative at 1 as substituting 1 for x gives me 2. 2 times 1 is 2. Then the derivative at 2 will be 2 times 2, which is 4. And the derivative at 3 is going to be 2 times 3, which is 6. You see that. So we found the derivative on the function itself. Now, let us find the derivative at b's. So, so the derivative at b, which now is 2, will be what? Substituting 2 here for x, we get this as 1 over 2. Derivative at b, which is equal to first was 2, right? So, we are taking the b values now, correct? So, if I take 5 here, then what do we get? We get 1 over 2 square root of 5 minus 1, which is 4 square root, which is 2. So, we get this as 1 over 4. Similarly, let's find the derivative on the inverse function for the value 10. It is 1 over 2 square root 10 minus 1. 10 minus 1 is 9, square root is 3, 2 times 3 is 6. So we get the derivative as 1 over 6. So what do you notice? You notice very clearly that if on the function derivative is 2, then the corresponding image point has derivative of half. For 4, we get 1 over 4. For 6, it is 1 over 6. Clearly, we have found that inverse function has the reciprocal slope of the corresponding points. Is this part clear to you? So, we have explored the derivative of the function and its inverse and we have figured out that the inverse function has reciprocal slope at corresponding points. Remember, any point which is AB on the function will be BA on the inverse of the function. And therefore, we are considering all the values of A's with the derivatives of inverse B, right? So that is the image point. We took the value of A as 1, 2, and 3, giving us B values as 2, 5, and 10 after we substitute in this particular function itself. And we found that the derivatives are related. They are reciprocal. So, I think you get the idea what we wanted to prove. Do you see that reciprocal function right there? So, we have with the help of an example already seen that the statement is true. Now, how do we really prove it algebraically? That is our next thing. So, now let's consider this function. So, we have a function which is f of x and we will prove that the derivative of inverse of f of x is 1 over derivative of the inverse of the function. So, to prove this, let us say that the function given to us is y equals to f inverse of x. So, that is the function given to us. Now, it really means that f of y is equal to x, correct? Now, if I take derivative on both the sides, what do I get? I get d dx of f of y, which is d dx of x. Now, derivative of f of y using the implicit rule will be what? Well, it will be f prime y times dy dx and d dx of x is 1. Now, from here, we can say that, well, y value is f inverse x. So, I am substituting y as f inverse x. Do you see that? 
y is f inverse x, correct? So I can replace these y's with f inverse x, correct? So we do get something which we are looking for. But let me go one more step here. I will write dy dx as equal to 1 over the derivative of y. Now substituting y as f inverse x, we get d dx of y which is f inverse of x is equal to 1 over f inverse of y which is f inverse of x. Do you see that? So we have shown that the derivative of f inverse x, derivative of f inverse x is 1 over derivative of f of f inverse x. Do you see that? So here is the proof written clearly for you. So what we exactly did was the function given to us is the inverse function y equals to f inverse of x. So we rearrange that as f of y equals to x. Taking derivative on both the sides, we get d dx of f of y equals to d dx of x, which means that the derivative of y is equal to 1, right? So we just rearrange this. And from here, we can write dy dx is 1 over f prime x. And y is equal to f inverse x. Substituting y as f inverse x, we prove that the derivative of inverse is 1 over, that is reciprocal, of derivative of inverse function. Does make sense to you? So that is how we have proved it algebraically. So I hope you understand the particular formula which is extremely important to prove and understand. We are going to take up now applications based on this formula in our next video. I hope it makes sense to you. Feel free to write your comments, share your views. If you like and subscribe to my videos, that'd be great. Thanks for your time and all the best.